Hello, Silpa, Alexa, and I assume other people will join us. If not, I've got the cream of the crop here with me. So uh, my wife is talking to someone in the background. Uh, working at home is one of those for both of us, you and me, uh, kind of distracting because things happen. And this is this post pandemic and pandemic period that we've all gone through has been enormously difficult and enormously stressful in so many ways. So the fact that you're plugging through trying to get your classes taken care of and having to do it online is commendable. And I, 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 uh, I respect you greatly because this is, this is kind of hard work. I know that, uh, uh, it's not fun for me either. Although, like I said, I, a long time ago, used to be on television uh, as a newscaster and reporter. So I don't mind a camera, but I had producers. There were people behind the scenes doing all the technical work. And were it not for my wife, who is much more pronounced, in fact, worked in television also, and she did a lot of technical work. She did radio announcing when she was in college and radio reporting. Uh, well, reporting, she was anchor person at a newscast at a college news station, uh, a college radio station. So uh, I have some experience, but this is different. This is very different. Um, and frankly, uh, computers are just fancy typewriters as far as I'm concerned. I, I literally have a an old manual typewriter, an electronic typewriter, an electric typewriter. And uh, I like them as much as my computers, but don't get me wrong. I love my computers and they're very handy, very necessary in this day's world. And I'm on the internet all the time. The internet is a ma magnificently wonderful research tool. You can learn a lot. You can also waste time like nobody's business on the internet. You however, can use the internet to do term papers. You can use the internet to find information. And as I've pointed out to you before, you can use the internet to help you during a test. Because my goal is for you to learn this stuff. And looking it up helps you find where things are so that you can do this on your own whenever you need to find something out like, maybe you'll be encouraged to read the newspaper and you don't have to do it by subscribing to a newspaper you can get the news from a newspaper online you can even you can subscribe to a newspaper electronically it's cheaper and you can read it on your screen you don't have to throw the paper away or you know unless you've got cats and dogs and it's good to have the paper there on the floor for them anyway that's that that's enough of that we talked about elections, I believe, the last time. Uh, and uh, do you have any questions with regard to political participation on elections from our last discussion about that? Uh, I, I, you have notes on the uh, Canvas website for elections. So be sure you print those out so that you can study those and also have them for your test. Uh, what I will talk to them later. Uh, they'll leave a message. Uh, how we don't go anywhere without our cell phones, but that's an irritant also, but also a great, great benefit in, as well. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to take a drink from my massively large uh, glass, which is bigger than my head, but it matches my shirt. That's the important thing. W well, we've talked about elections, which is, well, in the news. And by the way, I do want you to follow the news. For instance, we're coming up on what's called the midterm election, right? Well, anybody 
maybe somewhat at Methodist Hospital does. Well, we won't talk to them about it because they're not in the class to hang with them. Okay. As we talked about before, I believe, people don't pay much attention to elections. The average citizen, even if you're registered to vote, uh, what turns people on is the presidential election. Why? Because we get our news from television, from the news media, but particularly television. And what does television cover the most? Congress? Well, they do cover Congress, obviously. But guess what? There's 435 members of the House of Representatives. And they meet and have discussions and debates. Uh, but there's 435 different people. Oh, there are leaders and things of that nature. But it's a big mass of people. And it's kind of nebulous as to what Congress does in the minds of most Americans. Other than, you know, I don't like those guys on the other side. Uh, I'm a Democrat, so I don't like Republicans. Well, I'm a Republican, so these Democrats are communists. That sort of thing. Oh, no, those Republicans are fascists. They're Nazis, you know, that sort of thing. Because there's a lot of vociferousness, particularly since Trump was president, because he stirred it up because he knew that's how he could get elected. Um, but be that as it may, uh, we've had rabble-rousers before that run for office, uh, but nothing like him. So we're going through a difficult time in our country as well, but still in all, the president is what we follow because it's one person. It's one person, the leader, the man, the, 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 the big cheese, the guy on the top. Uh, everybody knows who the quarterback is on the football team because, well, he's the leader. He calls the plays. He's, he kind of runs the team along with the coach, of course. Uh, but he, he, he's the guy that leads it on the field. Well, the president's the guy that leads it on the field. And one day it'll be she leads it on the field. Uh, back when I was young, the whole thought that there'd be a black president someday was amazing. People didn't think it, particularly in the South, could ever happen. But it did, thank goodness. And Barack Obama was a pretty good president. And he's, he's been out campaigning for Democrats right now. Uh, and why, why, there's not a presidential election this year, is there? Because we're in the middle of a presidential term. We're in the second part of the four-year term of, of uh, uh, President Biden. Uh, so the elections, the national elections, as we talked about before, across the country are held every two years. Uh, and we have that because the members of the House of Representatives, the United States Congress, are elected to a two-year term of office. Senators are elected, U.S. Senators are elected for a six-year term of office. So about a third of the United States Senate is up for re-election every two years. But it's on a two-year cycle, a two-year cycle because of the House of Representatives for our national elections. But again, most I'd be willing to bet that most of you don't even know who your U.S. congressman is. And I'd say that's probably true. I'm looking out at my neighborhood. Oh, I know a lot of the people are, are that I know here and so ever, nor care because, well, that's some, you know, who cares about politics? The only person who care, doesn't care about politics is the person who's, and me, I vote, I participate, I'm involved. So at least I have a say. Might be minuscule. Back when I was in politics full time as a job, I had a bigger influence. Or at least I had a bigger part that I played. Uh, you can do that too. You can shape the country by political participation by being involved in some doors because there are dogs in the backyard going crazy. I apologize. I gotta close these doors. Okay, I'll close the doors and the dogs.
aren't making any noise. Now the cats are. Working at home. It's loads of fun. Uh, Roosevelt called, uh, Teddy Roosevelt called the Kong, uh, being president, the bully pulpit. The bully pulpit. Bully meant, by gosh, it's good, it's powerful. The bully pulpit. He said the presidency is the national bully pulpit because he is the one nationally elected leader, just like the preacher is the one person talking to the congregation. The president is the one person talking to the nation as a whole. The Congress speaks to 435 different districts in the entire country. And members of the Senate, that's the members of the House of Representatives, 435 members each state. So they're representing a state. Uh, but the president, so yeah, hey, who is your U.S. Senator? Got two of them. Anybody know? Anybody know? Who is our, who are our two U.S. Senators from Texas? Well, political participation is not working real well for you guys. I know one of them is okay. Ted Cruz. Ted Cruz, that's right. Ted Cruz. Uh, Ted Cruz, who's got this really scruffy beard now. Back when he was, he's a very, very bright man. Uh, Republican, and he's, because it, and one of our two U.S. senators, a Republican. <clears throat> our other U.S. senator, anybody know? That'd be a good thing to look up and know. Might even have a question as to who your two U.S. senators are. Johnny Cornyn. Who? Johnny Cornyn. John Cornyn. That's right. Also a Republican. Uh, had been on the uh, too much stuff in the brain. Some of it slips out from time to time. But uh, yeah, Cornyn, uh, conservative, Republican. We've seen, by the way, in terms of political participation, a radicalization of both parties, the Democratic and Republican Party. Uh, because really, thanks to Fox News and then MSNBC and particular uh, national cable television where people watch Republicans watch Fox News it is and they listen to Rush Limbaugh and uh, other right-wing radio hosts who spew a lot of hate and Democrats watch MSNBC who have liberals on uh, and I assume everybody knows the difference between a liberal and a conservative. And if you don't, don't feel bad about asking me and we can go into that as well. Uh, but as the country during and post Trump presidency has become more divided, divided, uh, the, 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 the more extreme elements of the parties have uh, become the essence of the party. Uh, again, Republicans now are extremely right-wing, uh, very ultra-conservative. Uh, in fact, you, know, you just had better do the right things or you're a bad person. Democrats, on the other hand, say they've moved over to the far left. A little stuff on my screen, excuse me for scratching my screen there. Uh, they've moved, uh, the Democratic Party has moved further and further to the left. We have uh, the woke liberals controlling much of the Democratic Party. Uh, the woke people refers to a phrase that's come up over the past couple of years that we're awakened to the necessity of being liberal. Uh, 
Uh, these are people that support abortion no matter what. Uh, these are people who want uh, liberal policies. Things that are under question and being undermined or changed because the Democrats don't control Congress. They don't control promise to do that. Um, he promised the ultra-conservative evangelicals and also talked to the Catholics about, you know, how well, we've got to do away with abortion. We've got to do away with these uh, crazy liberals and things of that nature. And I will put people on the Supreme Court who will do away with abortion. And they did. He did and they did. There were vacancies that occurred on the court. He pointed people that promised to do away, vote to do away with abortion. And in that recent court case decision that was handed down from the Supreme Court, abortion is illegal. If you are a woman and you become pregnant, then good luck trying to find a way to say, you know, I, this is not what I wanted. Um, it, it, it's the early stages. It's not become a human being yet. Oh, no, it's a human being. It, as soon as the sperm hit the egg, it was a human being because God made it a human being. Because that's what a lot of people believe in the Republican Party and the conservatives and conservative Christians and other religions as well. Not all, but... Um, and maybe you're opposed to abortion for that reason. Well, God bless you. That's everybody has a has a choice as to what they want to make, except women. Except women, and those of you who are women, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, you don't have a choice now about abortion because in Texas, uh, well, Governor Abbott, the governor of Texas. Uh, pushed through a law in the legislature, working with the uh, Republican leadership in the House and the Senate and the Texas legislature to uh, make it a crime, essentially, to have an abortion. That was a part of a legislation. It's not somebody that you uh, uh, impregnated. Uh, it's somebody that you know had an abortion. Uh, you can sue, you could sue them and ruin to ruin them. How far to the conservative, anti-abortion side the Republican Party has become? And then you have women and people who support a woman's right to make a choice about their body. The the far left side said a woman can should be able to make any choices, make any choices, uh, and. There are other liberal issues, such as gay marriage, such as uh, uh, sex change operations, where a, 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 a guy who said, I'm now a woman. I'm now a woman. I think of myself as a woman. I haven't had all the final surgery yet, but I am a woman. My personal belief, if you were born a man, you're going to end up probably being a man, vice versa. But, you know, you, I'm not I'm not making decisions for other people's lives, and I'm not going to. I stay in the, the attitude that everybody gets to, political participation is kind of all about. We get involved so that we make sure that there are laws to protect us, you and I who think we're gay. You want laws that protect your your lifestyle. If you're an, a, a conservative, Republican, uh, evangelical Christian or Catholic, you know, you know that's, that's a sin. And so we're going to enforce, make a law that is going to protect people from these people just being gay everywhere. That's what political participation is all about. If you don't participate, somebody else is going to make a decision that makes what you believe and what you want illegal or very difficult to practice or be involved in. So this whole process of getting involved in 
like we talked about the the election process and getting involved in who goes to Congress, uh, voting in the political primaries, whether you're a Republican or Democrat, so that the candidate that supports what you want gets to be the Republican candidate for participating in the election, getting your butt to the polls to vote, not only in the primaries for nominating people in your party, but then making sure that they get elected by showing up and getting your friends to go vote, talking to people. That's political participation at its best. Uh, now, we have talked about the presidential primary system, and we've talked about the electoral college uh, to an extent. Because uh, when you, uh, let me just go over a few things. When you vote for president, you're not directly voting for the president. Wait a minute! No, I I I I I, I voted for uh, 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 Donald Trump. No, no, no! I voted for him, and I, or I voted for Joe Biden, or I voted for Hillary Clinton. Well, actually, yeah, you did, but it's not your vote that directly elects the president, because the electoral college is set up to actually vote your can the candidates into office and the electoral college is set up on a state by state basis uh, so when we cast a vote for the presidential candidate of our choice in november of a presidential election year uh, we kind of think that we know who's going to be the next president but even if a candidate were to win the popular vote of the people on that tuesday in november he or she is not actually elected president that day you know, uh, the president of the United States is not formally elected, not formally elected directly by the people in this country, but are elected by a vote of the Electoral College in January of the year following the presidential election in November. Uh, this was set up by the United States Constitution and only slightly modified since the early 1790s. This method of Picking a president puts the election essentially in the hands of the states, the states and the state legislatures, which formally select delegates to the Electoral College. Today, by law, all but two states in the United States, uh, the Electoral College vote of the state is a winner-take-all, a winner-take-all situation where the candidate who wins the popular vote in the state gets all of that state's Electoral College votes. Texas, for example, where we, of course, are, now has 38 electoral college votes, something like that. Uh, like, for instance, in 2016, when Donald Trump uh, won the state's popular vote and Trump thus received all of Texas's 38 electoral college votes. In the two states that don't have the winner-take-all system, Maine and Nebraska, Electoral college votes are apportioned according to the percentage of the popular vote won by the candidates. But those are only two states out of 50. It takes a majority. The majority is 50% plus one. Excuse me. I don't know what that is. Guys, settle down. Settle down. Sorry. Uh, the candidate that receives a majority of electoral college votes for the offices of, uh, I'm sorry, um, takes a majority. It's not only distracting to you, it's distracting to me. Having all the noise in the background. I am sorry. Uh, the, uh, it takes a majority, the majority is 50% plus one to win the electoral college vote. The candidate that receives a majority of the electoral college, currently 270, for the office of president or vice president is elected to that office. The 12th amendment to the constitution provides for what happens if the electoral college fails to elect a president or vice president. If no candidate receives a majority for president, then the house of representatives, the house of representatives would select the president with each state delegation instead of each representative having only one vote. If no candidate receives a majority for vice president, then the Senate would elect or select vice president 
with each senator having one vote. Uh, there are 400, uh, 530 electoral college votes. There are 435 members of the House of Representatives and 100 senators. So that's why we have 400, I mean, 538 uh, total electoral votes. Uh, the 23rd Amendment gave the District of Columbia three votes on that electoral college. That's why there's 438, not 430, not 500, 538 instead of 535 which would be 100 members of the Senate and 435 members of the House of Representatives. Uh, the state's electoral college votes determined, is determined by the size of the delegation to the U.S. Congress. Uh, okay. I think that's all I cover on the test about that. Uh, the electoral college never actually, by the way, meets as a body. Uh, states delegates to the electoral college, the electors, in other words, meet in their state, usually the state capital, on the first Monday after the second Wednesday in December. You don't need to know that specifically, but that's the case. Uh, at that meeting in their respective states, the state electors cast their votes for president and vice president on separate ballots. Twelfth Amendment again. Uh, in specifying how a president and vice president are elected requires each elector to cast one vote for president and another vote for vice president. A state's electoral votes are recorded and then sent to Congress in the National Archives as part of the official records of the presidential election. Uh, by the way, a state electors are selected by the state's legislature and they're members of the party of the presidential candidate who won the most votes for president in that state's general election. These electors are chosen by the winning party and are submitted to the legislature for official selection as electors. These electors selected are always loyal party activists. Uh, I mean, people who are, you know, I'm a solid Democrat. I've been involved in democratic politics. When I go vote, I go vote Democratic, and I go to the precinct meetings, and I get myself elected to the county uh, precinct uh, county uh, party meeting, which is made up of all the delegates from the uh, uh, precincts where people voted in, in in our county, and then I get myself elected to the uh, the to the uh, regional meeting of the party, and then to the state convention. So I'm an active member of the Democratic Party or the Republican Party. These are the people who get involved and get involved in, in the electoral college. Uh, nothing in the constitution or federal law requires the state electors to vote, to vote according to the results of the popular vote in the states. Some, some states, however, require electors to cast their votes according to the popular vote, either by state law or by pledges to their political party. So, uh, these electoral college votes are uh, counted in a joint session of Congress on the 6th of January in the year following the meeting of the electors. Members of the House and Senate meet in the House chamber to conduct the official tally of electoral college votes. The vice president, as president of the Senate, presides over the count and announces the results of the vote. The president of the Senate then declares which persons, if any, have been elected president and vice president of the United States. Now, the vice, the president of the Senate is who? The president of the Senate is the vice president of the United States. The vice president of the United States sits in the Senate as the as 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 the as the uh, president of the Senate. And back, uh, oh, what year was that election? Was it eighty? Well, when uh, George W. Bush ran against Vice President uh, Al Gore. Al Gore lost narrowly, and it was a contested uh, situation because there were problems with the ballots in Florida. But the 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 resolution didn't come to the point where they could prove that the election was anyway. It ended up where. Al Gore had to uh, concede the election, and he had to announce in the Senate, because that's one of the responsibilities of the president in the Senate, to announce who's going to be president based on the votes that came uh, 
from. And so he got to announce that I ain't going to be president. It's going to be that other guy, that other guy who's in the Bush family. Pretty. Uh, yeah. Okay. I don't get to be president, but he does. He was very honorable about it. He was very honorable about it. And uh, anyway, so that's enough of, on uh, that part of our uh, about, about elections. There's also some other things that we need to know about political participation. And again, these are notes that you have. And I want to go go over them with you. I want to talk about them and answer any questions that you have, because I hope you have studied some of this. And but let's go over it again. Uh, public opinion. What are we talking about when we're talking about public opinion? Well, have you ever ha been polled? I mean, in other words, have you ever been asked a question, like if you were in the mall and someone says, do you have a moment where we can ask you a few questions about this product and what you think about it? Or we're asking, we're running a poll to determine what people are thinking about the candidates for this given office. You may not have. Uh, I have on a number of occasions, um, certainly in political races, because I am a regular voter, and so people know that, and, and and they will tend to go to people that might be in a party and involved. Sorry. I ought to turn that thing off, but if I turn it off, then I'll forget about it, and then something will... Anyway, I apologize for the interruption. When a poll is taken, a public opinion poll, or any kind of political polling as to who's ahead, who's behind, who are you supporting, who's everybody supporting. Public opinion polls represent a snapshot in time. A public opinion poll doesn't say this is what's going to happen. It just says where we are right now. Where we are right now. Because a month from now, we'll need to do another poll, public opinion and poll, ask questions because there will be a shift probably. More than likely. If not, we'll know there's only been a slight shift, which will cause the person who took the poll or the, or the party that took the poll or the candidate that took the poll to say, oh my gosh, we have not been effective. We've got to have different ads. We've got to get out and work harder. We've got to put more people on the streets to knock on doors. We've got to write new commercials and buy more time. And by the way, running a political campaign particularly if it's a congressional campaign, uh, even a state representative's campaign, uh, and certainly a U.S. senator campaign because you got to cover the entire state, and certainly a presidential campaign because you got to cover the entire nation, is an enormously expensive operation. And it takes a lot of people, and it takes a lot of money to buy time on television. For instance, if you wanted to buy, I don't even know because I haven't been active in campaigning in a long time, but so I don't know what the going rates are on local television in a major market, certainly not in Houston. Well, I did work on a campaign down here. Uh, I was not in charge of the media, but I was involved in it. Uh, buying an ad on well, running in Houston is expensive. You know, running anywhere is expensive. Trust me, I know. I was in debt for a long time when I ran for office. It was I, I, you know, I not only got campaign contributions, but I put some of my own money into it. So, yeah, I had to pay that off. Because, well, when you buy television ads, you're not just... Well, oh, well, it costs a lot of money to make a commercial, and it does, because you've got to uh, hire a film crew or a video crew, 
you got to set up wherever you're going to be doing it. And if the more elaborate it is, whether it's in a studio or out filming it or videotaping it, usually film is better because it looks richer and fuller. And then you transfer it to video or whatever you want to do. Uh, and buy, and you just don't run it on KHOU because I might not watch KHOU or you might not watch KHOU. You watch KPRC. And most, a lot of ads run during newscasts because people that watch the news are going to be people who vote, without a doubt. You watch the news by the large. You're obviously looking about what's going on in your community. And people who are responsible in that way, wanting to know what's going on in the community and make something about it and, and do something about it, are people who vote. Because that's how you change things, by who votes? Who votes? These are the people that make the decisions about how things are run in your town or community or city or whatever, county or state or nation. So cost, cost at KHO, because you got to buy an ad on KHOU and all of the TV stations and all of the cable facilities, because you'll want to buy it time on uh, cable networks as well. And it's not just videotaping or filming the ad, which is expensive enough because you're going to hire a professional to do that and it costs a bundle of money. But then you got to buy the time on the television station or the cable network or whatever. And just 30 seconds of empty air filled with as your next congressman, I plan to do things that are going to change your life, whatever. It's, you just have to, first of all, pay for the beep, 30 seconds of airtime. And on these television stations that cover a mega market like Houston, where millions of people live, that, that, that can cost thousands and thousands of dollars just to buy a commercial 30 seconds of time over a, you know and the more you have to and you have to buy more than one or two they got to run every every night before the election or every other night at least and you got to not just cover it on that station but that station and that station and that cable place it costs a ton of money so what do you think these people are doing a lot of the time? Well, they're out raising money, to Raising money. Which is why people consider politics to be corrupt, because where are you going to get that money? Well, you're going to go to businesses. You're going to go to rich folks, and they're going to make campaign contributions. But if I'm going to give you $1,000 for your campaign, it's not out of the goodness of my heart. It's not because, oh, I'm doing this because I want to participate in politics and do the right thing. No, I want you to be elected to office so that you'll do something for me and my business or my profession. That's what politics is about. We elect to people who are going to do something for us. That's why we vote. We, saw, we Yeah, we talk about, you know, we're doing it for our community. Well, I am my community to begin with, just like you are. And you vote so that your family is cared for, that you get good streets, that you get good water service, that when you call the police, they show up because you pay their salaries and they know it. And, well... And this is the reality of it, by the way. You call 911 from a poorer part of town, the police will show up. But trust me, if you live in River Oaks and call 911, the police will be there before you can say, thank you, I'm look. when will you, ding dong. I had a professor in law school here in Houston who, uh, was fairly well off because he'd been a very successful lawyer because before he became a teacher. Uh, 
And in fact, he'd worked at the Supreme Court, and so he was you know, very, very knowledgeable and therefore very uh, useful as a lawyer for a lot of people. Um, anyway, he had a great big house in River Oaks. And one night, uh, uh, oh, his alarm. He set off his uh, house alarm by mistake, by accident. And uh, within under five minutes police were knocking at his door and he'd already called the alarm company and told them you know call the police tell them that everything's all right but before they could the alarm company could respond and get the police on the line the police were already there now if you called the police and said please could you get to my house well yeah we'll be there now if you don't live in the richest part of town, if you live in oh a poorer part of town for sure, and how soon will they show up? Oh, we'll get there sometime or another. Maybe not that bad. They'll show up certainly. But he was sho he was shocked. Oh, oh no! Listen, I, we I called and and that, that this was a false alarm. Well, okay, because there were three cop cars outside, and they said, we're here. Uh, are you sure? Would you like us to walk through the house with you? Oh, no, no, really, I said it all. Well, we're more than happy to walk through the house, and we're more than happy to stay for uh, 15 or 20 minutes just to make sure that everything's all right. They didn't want to go. I, he expected them to say, he expected them to say, would you like us to go get you some ice cream? Because you're probably all very upset. And wouldn't have been surprised if they would have done that. No, they wouldn't have done that. But that was the, the, the sense he got that they're going to do anything because I live in the rich part of town. And it's good to be rich. No doubt about it. It is good to be rich for any number of reasons. And that's one of them, to have more political say. And the police are political as well because where do they get their payroll from? city council and so how the city council get their jobs they're elected okay that sort of thing politics okay it's how things are run and the people that are involved in it they're running things which also means that you could be involved if you get involved in politics you're going to be one of the people that are involved in running things that means you can have a better life for yourself and your family. And if you just sit on your butt and not participate in politics and let other people make the decisions, they're making decisions for you that you may not give. Uh, get what you want. And whose fault is that? Oh, it's their fault. No, it's your fault for not taking part. That's what political participation is all about. Anyway, so public opinion tells us where the public if i'm running for office i want to know what they're thinking at this given time but it's only a snapshot in time when i take a poll that's where we are now what's going to happen later got to take a poll later uh a poll shows what people believe at that given point of time they're predictive but only present a picture of what is in the minds of people at that particular moment the moment the poll is taken for instance there's a famous picture and i think it's in your book Oh, well, I'd send a print most of the printed books. I don't know about the uh, online book because I just don't remember because I've used different textbooks over time. I prefer the printed books, but hey, that's me. There's a picture of Harry Truman, who was elected president, and the newspaper, I don't know, I think it was the Chicago Times or something like that. The headline says, Dewey beats Truman, and Dewey was his Republican opponent for the presidency, but Truman won. In the, in the at the you know, as the later ballot boxes got counted, and see a newspaper goes to bed, so to speak. They have to get everything set up for the print, for the printers, and they have to set the type, and they do that late at night of the day uh, uh, that the, of the election. And when the news is ready to go out, uh, 
they're printing that newspaper like about midnight or one o'clock so that they can have them all printed up and then start getting delivered at 3 a.m. to the delivery people who then deliver it out into the neighborhoods. Well, they had to put the paper to bed and they, the, the election was not completely decided, but everybody thought that the Republic was going to, Republican was going to beat uh, Vice President Truman in the, his run for presidency. Uh, surprise, surprise, Harry Truman won. But the Chicago paper printed their headline going, well, you know, Dewey's going to win. So it's he got the newspaper, the Chicago newspaper, and was holding it up going, Dewey beats Truman or defeats Truman. And he's going, no, 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 that's not what happened. Famous picture, that snapshot in time. Uh, poll showed Truman's Republican opponent, Governor Thomas Dewey, was going to beat the socks off of Truman, and the election count went into the next morning. Over So one Chicago, that Chicago paper was so sure from the polls that Dewey is going to defeat Truman, printed the headline, Dewey defeats Truman. The Truman won, and there's a, that famous photo of smiling, I mean, he's grinning big time, a victorious Truman holding up that newspaper. Parties and elections. Let's talk about parties and election briefly. Uh, there are two factors primarily responsible for the United States having a relatively lower, relatively lower voter turnout than most other democracies. Number one, we have a rather cumbersome voter registration procedure. You got to go register to vote. And in a, these days, in, in a lot of areas, particularly uh, where there's a Republican majority and there's a fairly good sized Democratic minority, but if the Republicans take charge, they're going to, they've been writing, uh, make, well, they, well, they've been passing laws, making it harder for people to register to vote. In Texas, we had a law saying that you can't, if it's a long line, at the polls, because so many people want to vote, that you can't bring water and food to people in uh, to, to to keep them nourished and and not uh, dehydrated and pass out. They passed the law saying you can't do that. That interferes with the interferes with the election. No, that keeps the election going. That party said, these people are going to go vote, and we don't want them to vote, so we're going to make sure that we have laws. Because, you know, hey, if you're a rich person, you can have call up on your cell phone and have the food and water, and and, uh, and, and, and you can have cocktails probably de de uh, delivered if you wanted to. But no, no. We'll, we'll try to pass laws to make it difficult for people to vote. So you have a voter registration procedure that's hard to manage. I mean, you mean I have to go register? Where do I go register? Well, you got to go to the county clerk's office, or you have to talk to the elections officer. Well, where is that? I don't know all of these things. Well, you got to call the county. Well, how do I call the county? By this time, people are going, this is too much trouble to vote. That's just one vote out of thousands. That one vote might make the difference. It's sometimes down to just a few votes, and there are other people just like you and having that same problem that think like you as well, and it could turn the election. But it's a cumbersome process, and so that is why people just the heck with it. I'm not going to go vote. And trust me that people have money and got the wherewithal. They're going to go vote. They'll figure it out. They'll be protected. Cumbersome voting procedures and also a relatively weak political part set of parties, two parties, which doesn't educate and stimulate and motivate voters. Well, right now, out there, there are some democratic efforts to get people out to vote, but not that much. Not that much. Because, uh, for instance, I grew up hearing that uh, 
hey, we're members of a party of a very unorganized thing called the Democratic Party because we don't organize. We're just, you know, we're real emotional. We're going to get out and vote and things like that. But in terms of thinking about how we're going to get this done, Republicans generally are much better about the organization, but even they have some difficulty in uh, sometimes getting their people in, out to vote um, because you got to educate, got to tell them what's going on. And that in itself costs money and it takes time and you've got to have people willing to volunteer to do things like that or and contribute. Uh, and you've got to stimulate them coming toward the election time to mobilize them to go vote. That is tough. Because I want to stay home and watch television or I got things that I'd rather be doing. That's just, this is just nonsense. Well, it's not. It's not. It's important. But those are two reasons why uh, we have lower voter turnout than we should have, much lower than we should have. Uh, there's a two-step process for candidates in the U.S. House uh, in a general election year, even numbered year. Prospective candidates got to win the party's nomination, first of all, in a primary election, the primary, primary being the first, that word for the for first, usually, and you got to usually win by a majority vote in order to get on the general election ballot as the party's candidate for that given office. Or if you're running as an independent or a minor party other than, and look, there are two major parties, the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. And then there are all sorts of small little parties that have virtually no say in anything. But you still have people who are in that party because I don't want to be a Democrat. I don't want to be a Republican. Uh, so, um, uh, if you're an independent, well, I don't want to be either Republican or Democrat, and I don't want to be a member of any party. I just want to run as me, and this is what I believe. Uh, you can gather signatures on a petition to get, based on how, how, whatever your state law says to do so, uh, uh, petitions based on state law to secure a place on the general election ballot. You can actually do that. I mean, you got to go out and get people to sign. You got to walk door to door. Or you got to show up at some public uh, meeting and, and hassle people as they're going in, which usually people will run you off that are running the venue that's getting people to show up. Or the candidate then has got to complete it, compete. That candidate who, if he gets on the ballot, has got to compete against the nominee of the other party on the general election ballot the winner securing a plurality of the vote because there'll be more than two candidates. Anyway, one reason minor parties can't easily get on the general election ballot is because the two major parties, the Democratic and Republican parties, control Congress and all the state legislatures in the nation, and these bodies pass the election laws. Now, do you think the Democratic Party and the Republican Party want all these other parties having a say? No. Democrats hate Republicans and Republicans hate Democrats. Mm, particularly these days. Uh, but, you know, in the past, you know, Democrats and Republicans can work together. And, but these days, it's that's really hard, really hard, especially post-Trump, during and post-Trump. Uh, because the Republicans under Trump became hor horribly radicalized. But, you know, the Democrats are doing the same, on, but just pushing further to the left. It's a problem. But anyway, uh, so the, the, they control Congress. They can control the state legislatures. They're going to pass laws that make it hard for anybody else to get on an election ballot. Why? Because I don't like Republicans. I'm a Democrat. I don't like Republicans. I'm a Republican and I don't like Democrats. But the one thing we Democrats and Republicans agree on is we don't want anybody else playing the game. 
because even though I don't like Republicans, I don't like Democrats. We both know, hey, it's going to be one or the other of us, and it's going to be me. No, it's going to be me. It's going to be me. It's going to be me. But we don't have to. We don't let these third party people in the uh, a bunch of these other minor parties play in the game or easily get on the ballot. Uh, we're assured to be it's going to be either you or me, the Democrat or Republican. Well, that's not fair. Tell me what is. Tell me what's fair. Fair is where you go at every year in Dallas to ride on the roller coasters and eat corn dogs, you know, the state fair. Fair is what, who makes the rules? I think it's fair because I made the rules and I think it's a fair rule because it helps me and helps. And I've agreed with my opponent that it helps them too. So it's fair for us. And since we make the laws, that's the way it works. Well, that's not right. Well, then go out and vote and change it because that's the only way it would get changed. But people don't. Uh, so in other words, Republicans and Democrats are adversaries. They're united in making sure they control the electoral process to work to exclude minor pop, uh, parties from the process. Uh, Congress is principally organized along party lines in both the House and the Senate. Uh, whichever the two parties have a majority of the members in their party, that party controls the flow of legislation, the dynamics of legislation in that chamber. The party in the majority elects the leaders of the chamber, the House, the Speaker, and the Senate, the majority leader. The party in the majority in each chamber uh, places a, man, a majority membership of the party of their party on each of the committees in that chamber so that the majority then controls whether or not a bill passes out of the committee. If you're in the majority, you're gonna be running the Congress in that particular chamber. Chairpersons for committees and subcommittees are appointed by whom? The majority party, whichever party has the majority, Republican or Democrat. Essentially, Whichever party has a majority in a chamber controls that chamber. Uh, who's got control of the Senate right now in Washington? Republicans or Democrats? Who's got control in Washington of the House? You need to know that. You need to know that. I'm going to let you find that out. You got to do a little research. Okay. Uh, so we've talked about the electoral college, presidential campaigns and things of that nature. And we're past our hour, uh, a few minutes, we'll meet again. Do you have any questions? And we will continue in our next meeting. In the meanwhile, do you have any questions as to where we are? Again, look at your notes on the canvas website and by the way when you go to canvas always go to the home page always go to the home page where it has uh all of those blocks of information and on the left hand side you have those blue links don't use them unless i tell you which ones to use like you can go to your you can always click on the syllabus over there by the way, if I forget, I've forgotten to put something on the syllabus, let me know so in case I overlooked something so I can correct it. Anytime you see something that's wrong that you know of, let me know. Uh, you know, I don't have any hair to keep my head warm. So when I get my head gets cold, my brain doesn't work very well. Uh, so I, if, if you help me, I can help you better. So if you, if you catch me screwing something up, let me know. I'll fix it immediately for you because that's my job and I want to do it right for you so that you can succeed. And always remember, all you have to do to get help from me is to write me and I will do everything I possibly can to help you. And by the way, if you miss a test, give me a fairly good reason why. But even if you just, well, I forgot, but don't make it more than once. Uh, 
I'll let you do a makeup. We'll do our makeups at the end of the semester. At the end of the semester, and I'll have a makeup period for you. Uh, all right. Any questions? Okay. All right. Uh, I'll see you again soon. Let me know. Let me hear from you if you need anything. And uh, hit your book. Read those things. Read all of your notes. Ask any questions you have of me, and I'll help you out. Uh, so, anybody got any comments, suggestions, jokes? Okay. Well, I'll see you next time. You take care, and it's a lovely day. Go outside for a while. Isn't it awful being cooped up in here? It is. It's so pretty. Uh, my, I have a relative who used to be a uh, 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 superintendent of public school. And I know you don't remember this TV show, but you've heard of Bonanza TV show in the 60s, Lauren Green, uh, the Ponderosa. You may ask your parents, they'll tell you about it. But uh, one of the guys was a guy named Hoss, was a big kind of chubby guy, and he was one of the sons of, uh, of the uh, owner of the Ponderosa. Well, he had been a public school teacher, and my 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 cousin was the superintendent of the public school, and he always got into trouble. Haas did the guy that later became the TV star, big TV star on this major important TV show, or always the highest ratings back in the '60s, uh, into the late '60s and early '70s. Um, he'd take kids outside of the high school in, in, in Texas and because he was in Texas and, and, and he, he, there was a stump, a tree stump and he'd, if, if the kids would just sit on the grass and he'd lecture to them and talk to them and, and, and out, outside and he kept, the superintendent, my cousin said, you, you, you're not supposed to do that. Well, you know, the people like this outside, make it comfortable for everybody, enjoy learning. Well, I wish we could do that. But we can't. We can't, darn it. Anyway, it's great being with you. Take care, and I'll see you. Holler at me. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much. I have a question. Oh, sure, sure, yes. Um, So I, I think I emailed you about it, but, like, do we have any quizzes and stuff that we have to do? The only thing you have that makes your grade are the four tests and mm -hmm. the paper and that's it the no the, the, the quizzes quizzes and tests means the same thing uh, but there are no little tests in between your grade is determined by those five things and that's it your okay four exams and the paper and that's it Each okay and when are you going to open up the paper uh after the second test is completed Okay, yes, sir. And when's okay. the second test? Oh, gosh, I, I can't see it from here, but it's on your, go to Canvas. Mm -hmm. If you'll go to Canvas and look at Canvas, all the test dates are point are, 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 are posted there. In okay, each of the yes, units. sir. Okay. All right, thank you. You're welcome, of course. Anybody else? Good deal. See you. Thank you.